Good morning. Welcome to the Dragon School Podcast. I'm still Pastor Goodman, and uh, joining me again today is uh, my boss, the Executive Director of Higher Things, Erica Jacoby. Erica, how's it going? It's good. You, I'm just bossy. You can just call me bossy. My kids well, call me bossy. I, yeah, but it, I just, I don't want to get fired uh, yet. So yet. when it's time, when it's okay. time, when it's you time. know. Fair enough. Fair enough. So um, we're learning how to think uh, good, which is important <laughs> for me because I don't know how to think good. Um, Are we? <laughs> I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. <laughs> When you pitched this to me, you didn't say we were learning how to think good. We were, you're, you're in a former life, a teacher, and, and now you wrangle us. So <laughs> it's, it's got to be a, a good skill set. Last time we talked about a logical fallacy, a, a, a think bad, um, <laughs> called an ad hominem attack, which you, you recognize uh, because you stop attacking the argument and you start attacking the person. The, the simple way uh, to define, define it is uh, you're being a jerk. Um, yeah. So like, so remember just for a review, an ad hominem argument is attacking your opponent's character or personal traits instead of actually engaging in the argument that you're having. And remember, we even defined argument as um, it's a process whereby we discuss something and try to and, and come to the truth. That's the purpose of an argument. Right. So ad hominem is you're straight out just attacking the person rather than engaging with the, the discussion. We had a wonderful example where you attacked my character and you also told me- <laughs> That we was fun for me. <laughs> we weren't done. So I assume there's more wrong with me with ad hominems. Is that, is that where oh, we're yeah. going? We okay. are. Yeah. I'm going to give you another example of an ad hominem. So ad hominem, I believe I'm not a Latin expert, but I did study Spanish. So if there are Latin experts out there, um, you, can, you can correct me. But ad hominem, I think translates to at the man. So it's an argument, right? Where you're, go, you're attacking the person essentially making the argument. Um, And today we're going to talk about, and I hope I say this right, but I believe it's tu quoque. um, And I will give you the spelling. Um, But it's a type of an ad hominem logical fallacy as well. And people use it to avoid having to deal with criticism um, by turning it back again on the person with criticism. Okay. So I'll give you an example. I could have used this last time. (laughs) Right. So you could have turned it back and done a two quote way on me. Right. It could be really, I mean, so is this Latin for, I know you are, but what am I, or (laughs) what are we doing here? (laughs) Yeah, kind of. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Um, so an example of, uh, let me give you an online example for the kids out there because they'll relate to this. So like, it might be like, well, he can't accuse me of bullying him online because he bullied my friend last year. Okay. So claiming someone's argument is false because it isn't consistent with their past actions or words but what's wrong with that in terms of an argument goodman um it's still not actually addressing the argument it's yeah. it's just dodging it completely right so you answered criticism with criticism so you avoided engaging with it someone's critiquing you maybe hey you're being a bully um and instead i think kids do this a lot with their parents right and that's when parents come back with do as i say not as i do right right? You catch, you catch your kid. Um, I don't know, maybe hopefully not. Don't do this at, kid, at home kids, but <laughs> maybe home. vaping or something. And you go, well, you used to smoke dad. So you can't tell me not to, right? There was a famous commercial about this uh, in, in when I was little. Uh, and it was this anti-drug thing where the kids just get caught doing, doing bad things. Don't do drugs, kids. Uh, do but but he, he yells, I learned it from watching you. And, and that's where it right. just sort of cuts to the father right. in deep self-reflection. Um, right. And so I, this is one of those places where it might be perfectly true that you are also a jerk, but mm-hmm. that's still not mm-hmm. going to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And why, is, why do you think it's so effective to do a tuo quoque? Uh, attack. Well, because what does it do to that to attack person? a person than an argument it it mm-hmm. it silences them so i don't have to deal with what they're saying um yeah. and if i don't know how to argue the argument or even just the argument uh is nuanced and i might even have to admit that i'm maybe not perfectly right in my stance mm-hmm. you can be all the way dumb and mm-hmm. i don't have to deal with it at all then mm-hmm. right Right. I mean, have you ever heard in an um, in an argument the best offense is, or the best defense is, best a, good defense offense? is a good offense? Right. Oh, it's, it's that, that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's kind of, that's two quote ways. So if you think about it, now you can see this, another really, another really good example of this is you see this all the time in political debates and it's really degenerated. I mean, it's, it's never been great, but it's really degenerated, right? Um, so someone's experience, and let's talk about how you can, how you can actually respond to a two quote way argument, right? That actually would be really helpful. Right. So, um, so let's just say, let's use, let's take it to the political realm. Let's say a politician's tax plan can't possibly work because, um, you have no political or legal experience. Maybe you were an actor. So I lived in Minnesota for a while and they elected a wrestler. Right. And, um, and they just discredited it. Hey, it was pretty entertaining for a while there. Um, Jesse Ventura, look it up kids. It's kind of fun, but, um, you know, you could say, well, your tax plan is, is, is never going to work because you have no experience with doing anything with taxes. So why should we trust you? Well, a response to that is someone's experience um, can sometimes indicate their effectiveness, but not always, right? If um, And you can turn around with a question of, would you say that it's impossible for someone to be new and come up with really good ideas, right? Um, so, and, and then you redirect it back to the argument. In, in this case, you would say, it might be more reasonable for us to address the actual tax plan that this politician has, right? right. It's just directing it back to the matter at hand. Um, so that's really the best way to go. I'm like, and to just to say, hey, we're, I thought we were discussing his tax plan here. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of, and, and point out, hopefully in a nice way, that it's sort of an invalid argument because just because he's new, maybe he actually will have fresh eyes. Um, right. And sometimes someone's experience, you know, is important, but we can discuss that too. But right now we're discussing the actual tax plan. There right. Go. A broken clock can still be right twice a day. Just because I'm right. dumb doesn't mean I'm wrong. Right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. I learned a thing. Thanks, boss. Hey, I'm glad. All right. I'm glad we could have well, this time. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's do another one next time. What do you think? Let's do it. I'm pro. All right. Have a good one. You too.